What's up everybody, David here, and today we're going to be talking about computers, specifically this new custom PC that I just built for audio production. This was my first PC build and I spent a ton of time learning and researching and putting together what I think is a pretty solid build. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the computer, taking you through what I bought, why I bought it, and hopefully providing some insight to anyone who's maybe looking to build their first custom PC. Now there's a common theme you'll notice with this computer and that's that I tried to, I guess in a way, future proof it. So there's things that I bought that I'm not using to its full potential. Uh, I did that because I know that I'm going to want to do that later. So I figured why not spend the money now? Don't worry, I'll explain exactly what I mean by that when we get to those parts. So let's get started. First thing we have is the processor. I went with the Intel i7 8700K. Uh, the K stands for unlocked, so that means I can overclock the processor. And this is a 3.7 gigahertz six core processor. A big reason I went with Intel is I guess personal preference. I've had a lot of Intel computers. They've all been fantastic. And my last computer was actually an i5 that was I think five years old and it still ran amazing. So I've just had great experiences and I was very happy to go with Intel once again. Now, of course, that is not your only option. You also have AMD, which their new Ryzen chips are absolutely fantastic. For the first time, they're actually making people think twice about buying an Intel chip. The advantage to AMD is they're a lot cheaper. The chips are cheaper, the motherboards are cheaper, and you're just gonna save money. Now, as far as what to look for in a processor for audio production, Honestly, I've yet to find a straight answer. Some guys say it's all about the clock speed, some say it's about the amount of cores, and it's hard to find a yes or no on either one of those. So I went with Intel because I felt like it was the best of both worlds. It has a high clock speed and it's a six core, so to me it kind of checked off both of those boxes. If you guys can when building yours, I definitely recommend springing for the i7 or maybe like the 1700 Ryzen and up. But honestly, if you can, if that's not in your budget, I see plenty of computers using a Ryzen 1500 or maybe Intel i5 and they are still incredibly fast. So honestly, no matter what processor you go with, you're gonna have a great computer. But like I said, for me, I've always been a fan of Intel and they've just proved time and time again to be fast and reliable and that's exactly what I wanted. Now, going back to the future proofing I mentioned earlier, I am not overclocking this processor right now. I kind of just wanted to use a computer and get a feel for it before I started messing with things, but I bought the overclockable version because I know that sometime in the near future probably, I am going to want to overclock this. So I figured, just spend the money now. I picked up the i7 for 390 bucks. Next we have the motherboard, which was hands down the hardest decision of this entire build. There is an insane amount of motherboards to choose from, ranging from $100 to $500, and it's very easy to get overwhelmed. So for those of you building your first PC, I want to give you an important piece of information that I learned when choosing a motherboard. And that is that a $200 motherboard will not be twice as fast as a $100 motherboard. Essentially, you're going to get similar speeds with any motherboard that you buy, but what makes them different, what makes them especially more expensive is the features on the board. This includes things like more and different types of USB ports, faster USBs, better and more efficient cooling, uh, RGB lighting, better construction. There's a lot of different things that can make a motherboard more expensive. Obviously, yes, if you're doing heavy overclocking, you might want to spend a little bit more on the board to get something with better cooling and better construction because that's gonna to lead to a more stable overclock. However, if you decide to go with a budget line motherboard, something more inexpensive, you're gonna be just fine. You're not gonna lose half of your processor speed and your computer will still be very fast. It's easy to get lost in all these different motherboard prices and just remember to choose something that fits your needs. Choose something that has the right amount of ports, uh, maybe the right version of the ports you want. Maybe you need extra HDMI, maybe you want the RGB lighting. Just pick something that checks off all the boxes. Find out what you need, find out what you want, and then choose a motherboard from there. My motherboard of choice was the ASRock Extreme 4. I chose this because it had the right amount of USBs. It had the USB 3.1 Gen 2, which is a faster version, great construction, and it also has RGB, which was not a requirement, but it still looks super cool. And yeah, this one just checked off all the boxes, and then not to mention, it got absolutely incredible reviews. Everywhere I went, people were like, get this board, it's incredible. So I went with it and that ran me $165. So far, from what I can tell, it's been fantastic. Next, we have the CPU cooler, which my first choice was the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, and that's just because that's the cooler that everyone buys. That's the one that everyone swears by, but upon further research, I actually came across the CryoRig H7. And I went with this one for a couple reasons. It was actually proved to be more efficient and quieter than the 212 was. 
What really sold me on it is that it's quieter because I'm recording in the same room as my PC, so I need things to be quiet. This one came in at $35, a little more expensive than the 212, I think like two or three bucks, but to me, it was worth it. As far as RAM goes, I went with 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is a 3000 megahertz RAM. And as far as the speed goes, I did some research and found out that 3200, three grand was kind of the sweet spot for performance. So I went with the 3000 megahertz because it was on sale at Newegg. This is normally $205 and I got it on sale at Newegg for 190 bucks. And what's cool is it's white, so it matches my case. So overall, this was a no-brainer. Now, you're probably noticing that there is no graphics card in this build. And that is because I fully intended on buying a 1060 until the prices shot through the roof again. I refuse to pay $350 for a graphics card right now. So what I'm doing right now is using the integrated graphics in the processor and I actually got a GTX 660 Ti off of a buddy of mine for dirt cheap. So I'm gonna throw the 660 in the computer for now, and then once the graphics cards come down in price, I will pull the trigger and buy a 1060. Next we have the power supply, which is a just standard 600 watt bronze power supply. This is not modular, just regular power supply. Uh, the next build I probably will go modular just for cable management though. But this is another good example of the future proofing. Like I said earlier, I intend on getting a 1060 graphics card once they come down from being like a billion dollars. So when I chose my power supply, I calculated it with the 1060 in the build to make sure that when I got the card later on, I did not have to purchase a new power supply. So yes, right now this is overkill for what's currently in this build, but that is because I still intend on getting the 1060 later. This power supply costs 60 bucks and now that I think of it, there might have been a rebate. Oh God, I should check on that. Anyways, yeah, 60 bucks for this power supply. It's not too bad. Now, next is storage. There are two different hard drives in this computer. The first one is a Samsung 850 Evo 250 gig solid state. And then I also have a two terabyte Seagate drive that came in this ugly box with no pictures. The Seagate is a 7200 RPM drive. I would not recommend getting anything less. Uh, I know the 5400s are a little bit cheaper, but honestly, just spend the extra money, get the faster drive. So in case you don't already know, the reason people do two drives is because you run Windows and all your programs off of the solid state and then put all your data and files on the actual Seagate spinning drive. Doing that, uh, my Windows boots up in like 10 seconds and it is blindingly fast. So I would definitely recommend this configuration. The solid state drive came in at $90 and the two terabyte Seagate drive came in at $60. Next we have the Wi-Fi because well, I need internet. So this is just the TP-Link N900, had amazing reviews. It supports 5G Wi-Fi, which we have at our house, so that's cool. Uh, it was only 35 bucks and I just plugged it in and it just worked, it was super easy. Nothing too crazy here, but yeah, this is just giving me Wi-Fi, ran me 35 bucks. And lastly, we have the case, of course, which is the beautiful Fantex P400S. Now my first go-to with the case was the NZXT 340. Uh, it's a super modern case, it's got a window on the side, but what I didn't like was that the window scratched with just your fingernails and those scratches would not come off. So that's what prompted me to look into other cases. I came across the Fantex P400S and realized that I like this one a lot more. So there's three things that made me choose this case over the NZXT. First one is that the side window is not plexiglass. It is full tempered glass and it just looks and feels a thousand times better. Second thing is that the S on P400S stands for silent, so it's actually got sound deadening material on all of the exterior walls, making the case very quiet. Third thing is that the case just looks gorgeous. I mean, it came in white, which is something I really wanted. Uh, the tempered glass looks amazing on the side, and plus it comes with RGB lighting, so it actually comes with a little magnetized strip you stick to the top of the case, plug it into the header, and boom, you have RGB lighting. And what's really cool is the front of the case has a built-in dedicated button to cycle through all the different lighting presets. This case, the Fantex P400S clocked in at $90. After all was said and done, the computer cost me just above $1,100, which was right around my goal and I, I couldn't be more happy with it. So far, it runs absolutely incredible with the audio. It is a huge, huge improvement over my last computer, which again was like a five-year-old i5, so I could not be more stoked on this build. Now, one thing I have for you guys, a little small tip too, is to be aware of where you guys are purchasing your parts from. So uh, I was gonna purchase about 75% of my parts from amazon.com because they had the cheapest prices. It was maybe a dollar here, 10 bucks there. It wasn't a huge difference, but why not save that money where you can? 
So I was going to purchase about 75% of my parts from Amazon until I looked over at Newegg.com. Turns out Newegg was a little bit more expensive on the parts, like I said, a couple bucks here or there, but the difference was, because I live in the state of Nevada, Newegg did not charge me tax. 8% tax on a $1,100 build is like 100 bucks, so that could be a pretty big difference in your build. That could be the difference between a locked and an unlocked processor, or maybe 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. So definitely be conscious and just make sure you're getting the best deal and just shop around. Now one more thing is you can go a lot of different ways with this build. If it's maybe out of your budget, you can go cheaper with the Intel maybe i5 or something. You can go with the AMD Ryzen chip. You can go with the cheaper case, a smaller SSD. There's a lot of things you can still do here to save some money. And also on the other hand, if you have more money, you can also improve a lot on this build. So there's a lot of different ways you can modify this to fit your needs. I'm gonna be providing a list of all the different parts I used in this build in the description below. So make sure to check that out if you want more information. Overall guys, this was my first custom PC build. I learned a lot in the process of doing this and hopefully I was able to share some of that information with you guys to make it a little bit easier if it's your first build. So hopefully I helped you out there. So yeah guys, make sure to leave any comments or just thoughts that you have about this build in the comment section below. If you have any questions, please, please ask me. I will definitely answer those for you. So yeah, that's it for today guys. I so just wanted to take you through my build, uh, show you what I chose, why I chose it. I'm super happy that I did this. I'm super proud of myself that I did this honestly because building a PC was very intimidating for a long time. And I just finally just said, fuck it, I'm doing it. I would definitely recommend giving the custom PC route some thought if you're in the market for a new computer. I actually compared these a lot with maybe like a HP or a Dell you would buy from Best Buy. And these were more expensive. This is maybe two, 300 bucks more expensive, but you also got the newest processor, faster RAM, you got an SSD, which did not come in the other computers. And there's just a lot of perks with building your own. And just having, just knowing that I built that by myself is like satisfaction alone. So I would definitely, definitely check it out. So on that note, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's new videos every single week and you don't wanna miss any content. Once again, thank you so much for watching. My name is David and I'll see you next time.